Hello and welcome to the Creative Lotus Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Zaki. Chicago Bear fan, and it's a very proud Chicagoan. An Illinois boy, I will say, I'd say bear down. Bear down. Stay in rhythm. Find a rhythm. The healthiest rhythm with the most balance. Find it. Just find it. Take your time. Be gentle. Be focused. Be clear. Be compassionate. Be wise. Find your rhythm and then stay in it. It's like a speed back. Speed bag isn't about speed. It's about listening. It's literally about the sound. That is the cheat code to a speed bag. Become a really good listener. And that means listening to myself, listening to my heart, listening to really who I am, what I'm doing, why am I doing what it is that I'm doing, when I'm doing it, with whom I'm doing it. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Lotus Podcast. On this week's episode, we have actor David Haley. Please enjoy this episode. What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Creative Lotus Podcast. On this week's episode, we have actor David Haley. Welcome to the podcast, senor. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for being here with me. Um, so, David, I'd like to just jump right on in and get going with everyone. Kind of, Great. I know that on your your social media it says you're Chicagoan. So, kind of give us a breakdown of like that's where you're born and raised. Kind of, what was your childhood like living in Chicago, and uh, ultimately, what brought you out here to Los Angeles? Oh wow. Okay. Um, well, hi everybody. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Yeah. Fun. Let's start with that. Let's um, start with the hello. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, I um, I just got back from Chicago yesterday or this morning. Um, wow. My niece graduated from high school. Um, I was um, I'm an Illinois boy, so I was born in um, Des Plaines, and from there, Arlington Heights, like the, or the western suburbs, and then s- end of sixth grade, moved to Hyde Park, and then uh, on the south side, right near um, the Museum of Science and Industry, we called Obama Land. You know what I mean? Oh, and right, and uh, grew up there and then um, applied to 10 colleges hmm. uh, all over the United States and got into none of them. And oh. so then I got, yeah, welcome to my life. High school was great. And then I got into a state school, uh, Southern Illinois University of Carbondale, very proud Saluki. Um, nice. And yeah, and then I... Um, uh, I applied to Loyola Marymount here in LA, where I am, we are now, and yes. got in and and um, and uh, transferred over. And to, I, why did I come? Because my buddy was here. Because I had friends here. Because I wanted to. I have to be honest with you. We traveled all over um, uh, California, and I had no interest in coming to California. I had no interest in being an actor. I had I had no interest in zero. My mom directs theater in Chicago for 40 some odd years. It's like, I, that was her thing. Yes, I did plays. Yes, I did other things. But like, I never thought about it. And then, mm-hmm. boom, I got on the campus and something hit me. And got it. excuse me, I was like, there's something here. And that was mm-hmm. that. And um, I got in and I said, I'll be a, a, a business major. And uh, they said, well, the only way you can get in just with your grades and the transfer is to be a theater major. I was like, oh. fine, I'll be a theater major. I'll be a theater major. I don't care. Like, I, I'm going to transfer out to the business school anyway, so I don't care. I'm going to go work for Steven Spielberg or do something like this or go to law school or something. And yeah. then um, there was – I had a teacher walk up to me and said, you know, David, you have an audition for any shows this year. I was like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm going to. I'm on it. I got, I'm on it. And uh, and she was like, well, there's auditions coming up tomorrow, and I expect to see you there. She's the chair of the department. She goes, wow. you know, you have to keep, you have to keep auditioning to stay in this department, stay, you know, stay in school. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll audition. And they said, great. We want you to bring 16 bars of music and make sure you have your sheet music ready. And I was like, I'm not bringing any sheet music. What the music. hell? I was like, I don't have any sheet music. So, uh, so, so I show up and they're like, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, I'm going to sing happy birthday, <laughs> which is the hardest <laughs> song to sing. By the way. Yeah. It is, so exactly. yeah. I'm in the room and. And they, and, and, you know, I sang happy birthday to the director of the whole thing. I used her name, Diane. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, great. Um, you did that. So now you're going to go ahead and you're going to go to the dance part of the audition. I'm like, I'm on it. No, I'm on. Come on. I'm on the way. Five, six, seven, eight. (laughs) So I leave. I leave. I leave. I hear my name being shouted across like the campus, like the campus lawn. David. The dance auditions are that way. And I was going the other way. And so I just <laughs> sheepishly walked into you know, the dance audition. I walk into this room and there's like 50 women um, who are dancing amazingly. 
and then me. And I was like completely intimidated, but then completely engaged. And I did my thing. And um, then about three or four days later, people kept coming up to me. Congratulations. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. People I don't know. It's a small school. And wow. then one guy came up to me and he goes, hey, man, congratulations for real. And I'm like, what are you congratulating me for? And he goes, look yeah. on the call sheet. You got, you're in the play. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And it was, uh, it was Once on this Island. It's an amazing play about, you know, the islands and, you know, love mm -hmm. and compassion and care and um, overcoming obstacles. And I mean, really about a lot about clearly my faith, but it's um, so that was it. And then I did that. And then once the play was over, I got really depressed. Hmm. And uh, one of these other you know, pr professors came up to me and was like, you have the blues. You have the blues. <laughs> it means this is for you. <laughs> This is for you. Wow. And I was like, no, I don't want this. I don't want to, mm. I don't want to be in love with this. This is hot and cold. I need consistency. I need structure. I need no. And this is what I've been doing since then. So. Wow. What was it that made you not want to do that? Because your mom, like you said, your mom was oh, all about it for actors. so long. <laughs> Ugh, actors. Actors. Oof. Woof. Just not. But you know, actors talk too much. Actors love themselves too much. Actors, mm. you know, do too much. You know, they fall in love easily. It's like, I want, just give me some space. Got and it. then I just fell in love and I'm just a sucker for falling in love. And so I just, and I, I've, I've been on it since then. And it's actually helped me power through some real tough, tough times. Hmm. Wow. So, go to school, go to Loyola. Do you graduate from there? And then if so, what, what was kind of your next steps getting into like the LA acting scene, the, the, the bug bit you, you got the blues, but kind of how do you progress from there? Right. So I did this show. It was a show by JJ Abrams called uh, Felicity. It was like this really oh. popular show in the nineties, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I just, I got an agent, you know, Linda Cardellini, who's a great actor, um, she was a classmate of mine and she said, I'll introduce you to my manager if you want. I said, I would love that. Hmm. And I met him and he signed me and I started auditioning and I did that show. And then I was, um, I was getting ready to go to, uh, and I was in college still, still in school. Um, yeah. and Loyola is great. They let you work professionally and come back to school. They don't like that. Some schools don't let you do that. Some people have to drop out or whatever. Um, right, right. and, um, yeah, I was getting ready to go do passions. That was, it was this, uh, this, uh, this, this soap opera where mm. it was like, you know, just, it was all about being passionate. It was the opening, it was the opening season of the premiere season on, on NBC. Okay. And JJ Abrams pulled me aside at work and he goes, Hey, I heard that you might be leaving us to go do a soap opera. Don't, mm. don't do that. Oh, stay with wow. us. Stay with us. We'll, 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 and he has, he throughout my career has championed me, got me in rooms that, you know, I may otherwise have not been able to get into. And, and he's been a really, I mean, I saw him on the street like 10 years later and he was like, I know you like he's br a brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, and then I just kept working from there uh, bit by bit, you know, brick by brick, dollar by dollar. Um, mm. And um, yeah, so it's been that it's been, and there are times where I took breaks. There was a year I took a three year break, which I couldn't imagine doing now, but I did then. I was, mm. you know, I was 24, started opening nightclubs and working in that world and got away from the whole thing, but I had to come back to it for sure. Wow. Yeah. So kind of speaking to that, you know, it's, yeah. it's amazing because you have this great connection. You get on a TV show like Felicity, which was, like you said, a huge success. You know, that's not really the, the quote unquote normal story for so many actors who come out to LA. Uh, do you find that sure. your ability to kind of, you know, not only morph into characters, but like, uh, I guess, you know, we talk about in Buddhism, right? Like the fortune that you build is ultimately kind of like how things kind of keep moving forward. So like, I'm just curious, kind right. of like how, how do you, you know, keep on auditioning and keep on going, but then also, you know, end up booking these, you know, bigger roles and kind of making these connections with people that are, you know, well-known in Hollywood? How do I keep doing it? I think, I think that I have to say, I have to, you know, uh, credit my family. I think that mm -hmm. growing up in a theater family, um, you know, my first play was uh, Romeo and Juliet when I was in second grade. Uh, and I played Romeo and uh, I played Romeo and Juliet and I will never forget when he goes to kiss. No, 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 no. It was, it was, you know, it was sleeping beauty. 
Oh, wow. and now I played Prince Charming, and he has to kiss her to wake her right. up, right? Right. And in second grade, the director's not going to let that happen, right? So I have to shake her to wake her up. And all of the kids, like it was like it was like K through eight, were like, boo, come on, man. You're not going to kiss her. Like It was that moment. Oh, and I, I'll never forget that. Um, how do I keep going? I think that my faith, my Buddhist faith, our, you know, our practice is, is – um, something that keeps me going. I think I never have the end game. And I think this is also, this is great, but it's also a flaw. Like mm. I, it, the end game for me is to continue to be happy and to continue, yeah. continue to work. Right. And I think if I had more of like that killer instinct that, that so-called it would, it, maybe my world would be different, but I'm very much like want to engage with, with um, telling the truth, telling stories, characters make me excited about you know being able to do this and do that and that's also a trap so it's a it's a it's a balance um and also just being determined i'm not, I'm not i can't do anything else hmm. yes i can go work at the bank yes i can go work at the post office yes right. i can do those things and those jobs are great jobs but i want something different and i think to be fully self-expressed to be honest to be loving and loved i think that's part of what i do a big part of what i do yeah Absolutely. The, you know, the yeah. struggle of living yeah. in LA is not a cheap city. It's not an easy city. It's very kind of, can be very isolating as well. So I'm kind of curious, kind of, you know, what yeah. struggles have you gone through in your career and relationships and life and everything that you feel like have ultimately kind of fueled you to kind of be, uh, you know, the one that doesn't give up and the one that, you know, sees success in your career as well as an actor. It's a good question. What struggles have I seen? You know, um, I, what struggles have I seen? Many. I think there's struggles of the heart. And I think that my job, I have to be vulnerable. It's like, you, it's like, you can't let the scab heal. You just keep picking at it. Right. Mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to, so that I'm aware of it. But I don't want to live that life. Mm -hmm. But there's a part of me that has to be able to tap into these things fluidly. Right. To live. I don't want to be an actor. I want to be an experiencer. Like, I want to be able to, I want to be you to experience it with me, to go on the ride, right? So there are things that the characters go through that I have to really um I went through a phase in my life where I played villains all the time. Hmm. Because I was trying to understand why they were making the choice they were making, right? Hmm. Um and I'll get to the your your question uh, specifically. <laughs> but I I heard this great talk the other day about how like the villain and the the hero look at things the same way. Right. And the hero says, I'm going to work so hard that no one ever feels this way ever again. Mm -hmm. And the, the, that's the hero. And the villain says, I'm going to make sure everybody feels my pain. And so it's two very different approaches to things. And so for so long, whatever obstacles I've had, I've tried to alleviate from other people. My struggles have been, wanting a family and not being able to do that because of whatever reason, like um, I mm -hmm. travel or they travel or it's, it's, it, and, and LA is such a place where everyone's really on their grind. Right. Yeah. And in LA, it seems like I'm, you're always having two conversations, like the conversation you're having with the person. And then the other conversation are like, what is the real conversation we're having? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've gone through um, being broke. Uh, I've gone through, um, you know, cars my car got repoed i got gone through <laughs> i used to get the boot like once a year like just because oh, i was shit. not paying attention because i was i was i was i was ignoring things you know mm. i was like i'm just not gonna pay that don't worry it'll, la don't worry it'll be fine and then boom they come and put that you know uh what obstacles i've had i've had people tell me that we were gonna make a movie together i assemble a crew a cast i write the script i get everything mm. together and then the guy bails with the money wow. for the movie I mean, he takes, we had, a, you know, it's a short film. What are we making a short film for a hundred thousand dollars for? I've no, re I've no idea. You can make a short film for $10. Yeah. And, and it, we had a hundred thousand dollars and he took it and he left. You know how heartbreaking that was? I was like, how do I trust anybody now? Mm. You know? And this guy was like executive, this executive, that bu -bu 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 flashy, flashy, flashy. And, um, obstacles, what I've had to overcome. Most of them are internal. Um, the external ones you can, anybody can, fight those off but the internal ones are the toughest ones mm -hmm. doubt doubt's like a weed i mean it just grows and grows and grows and that i think is is the biggest obstacle and how have i stayed 
I have, I have great friends. I've got great people around my chosen family. And I think that's essential if you're coming to Los Angeles and doing this. This is essential. And then also, I, and I said, I don't have a plan or no, have a plan. And that's not like, I'm going to be here for three years. And if I don't make it, I'm leaving. That can't be it. That can, that, 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 that's the opposite of the plan. That's yeah. ultimatums. And because this, this, it's, it, you just don't know. Sometimes you hit lightning in a bottle. You know, I had my agents uh, drop me. They said, you know what? This isn't working out. I said, okay. They said, we're going to let you go. I said, okay. Hmm. A girl that I knew from a friend of another friend that went to Loyola Marymount with me, but I didn't go to school with her said, you know what? I'm a, I, I remember you from, from the, from the, from the, 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 the play about the islands. Wow. And Take boom, back. Yeah. she signed me and she started fighting for me. And then bang, I was on my way. I started booking jobs right away. Wow. So how very carefully. And I think with, with clear intention and honesty, no, that, thank you for sharing. I think the, what you're talking about is like both the external and the internal are something that all of us kind of go through, but yeah, the, the perseverance or like the never giving up is kind of, you know, where it kind of stands. Right. And dealing with that doubt. I mean, literally yeah. daily, I think, you know, I personally go through it and go like, yeah, you have to like somehow push past that self doubt and keep on, keep on going forward and believe. I was just curious, kind of like, so what do you do when that kind of arises? Uh, you see that kind of self doubt or the, the disbelief in yourself even, right. That you're, you know, capable, if you will, right. um, to kind of persevere through that because, you know, acting, I mean, you tell me cause you're the actor here, but you know, it seems very like isolated in what you're doing, right. right? You're not doing a play or something where you're constantly working with people. It's like a lot of it's self tapes or it's auditions and it's you and a casting director or not even that you right. and a camera lens you're looking at. So how do you kind right. of right. Right. stay? How do I stay? How do I stay? Um, you know, there's this, this quote, um, you know, that the viol acting is the most intimate of all arts, right? The violinist has the violin, the pianist has the piano, and I have you. I have you. It's you and me, and we have um, the text, right? So what do I try and do is I try and be around other people as much as I can. I know some people are like, oh, I want to be isolated. I want to, you know, I'm introvert or extrovert. I'm much more, I want to be around people. How do I stay? I truly in my heart believe that I have something to give. Mm -hmm. I believe that there's something that I, I have to offer this world of in this art form. Yeah. And also I love this shit. I mean, being the hero in the story or being the villain in the story or being the villain that gets to turn into the hero in the story, uh, whether I'm doing 12th night or, uh, you know, or it's uh, a soldier's play, you know, we did, a, I did a soldier's play and that stuff and, and, and seeing people's reaction and getting to have a dialogue and to be intimate with other people, like having intimate conversations and them being like, I never saw it like that. I didn't mm. think about my life this way. And, and maybe I'm being grandiose to think that I can affect somebody's life. Maybe it's, you know, I, I it's like, maybe I'm the vessel and I, I, there's part of that. It's mystic in a weird way. There mm. is a thing that's mystic. About, about yeah. acting um you know you see it you know i was watching a thing today about wolf of wall street behind the scenes of how leo just like clicks in it's people are like well how did he just do that there's something going on you, you know you, you see it with viola davis she does there's, there's something she's tapping into that keeps me going that feeling that feeling of being on the stage or being on a sound stage the excitement you know i just did young sheldon a couple three weeks ago and just being on that stage and it was like what? And it was a plane. <laughs> they had a, a quarter of a plane. It was cut into a quarter. Wow. You know, when you walk up the steps and you get there and you sit down and all of a sudden it's like all these moving parts, there's, you know, 25 people that are background artists and all this wow. stuff. And it's like, okay, this is great. It's like every kid's dream, you know? So yeah. that's how that's, I, I guess that's how I do it. And the dark times come, they come, they're coming for you. They're yeah. coming for you. And it's how do I navigate? It's a real belief, you know, I have yeah. a real belief um, yeah. that I can do it. Yeah. 
So you speak to the idea of kind of like having that spark or that sense of like childlike joy still with what you do. Uh, you know, I feel like right. that's kind of a rarity. Like, you know, a lot of people kind of get tired or, you know, as the saying goes, kind of people get jaded after like working for, you know, X amount of years or for so long. So kind of what is it that kind of still makes you kind of like, you know, have that joy while you're on set and working on a new project when seemingly it could be kind of like, great, I booked the job and kind of like, let's do this thing and, you know, go on to the next. I don't want to make a fool out of myself. Uh, that's a big <laughs> one. Um, no, I, I, the, uh, don't be an ass in front of all these people. That, that, fe- that mm-hmm. fear is real though. That, feels, that fear is very real, but no, um, what keeps me with the joy, um, you know, I showed my nephew uh, yesterday, uh, two days ago, mm-hmm. uh, Karate mm-hmm. Kid for the first time. He had never seen Karate Kid. The original he's or the and he's taking Jaden one? The OG. Oh, no, no, okay. No, 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 okay. No, no, no. We're, not, we're not watching that one. We're, <laughs> Mr. Miyagi, this is, yeah. This isn't Red Table. Yeah, Mr. Miyagi. This isn't Red Table. Um, and so get, get out. Get out. Cannot. And cannot. So, and so... <laughs> And um, and it has so many jokes. I'm just stopping. Don't say it. Don't yeah, say I know. That. I know. Don't right. Say that. You know me enough. You don't want Will to come out to your ass. <laughs> come on, bro. Uh, look, oh, come on, bro. Oh, you know man. what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not five seven, 140. But um, but uh, um, he when he finally realized, my my little nephew realized that. The wax on, wax off, the the send the floor, send the floor, all that stuff. Like once he realized that it was him teaching him karate, mm-hmm. uh, karate, he he went like this. He goes, Oh my god. He was so excited and I got so excited with him. Right. There is that thing that I still have where I, I and I, I have to be honest, it's it, it maybe it's selfish if I'm honest. Hmm. That I'm still working through a lot of things. I don't have any of this figured out. Hmm. I don't have it figured out. I don't have it figured out like that. I'm working. I'm a. Everybody's a work in progress. Yes, I know. All the platitudes are fine, but I want to get to something. I've been on stage where it's been great. I've seen. You know when you hear someone sing. You know. You know. I know you're a great singer, but um, some people who. Yeah. Um, you know. You know, you know when you sing. <laughs> When there are someone can sing, like, oh, they're a great singer. And then you hear someone that can really sing, sing. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh boy. Right. And I think I'm in my dreams. I, I, I will, I will, I want to give that to someone in terms of seeing a character being played. I I was in a, I was in a a, a movement class. Um, I would say dance class, but that's, I, I can't dance like that, but a movement class. Uh, with my friend Jana, and she is a dancer. I mean, she is unbelievable. It's like, well, you're doing something else, and that's what I want to live in, and that's what I train to live that way so that then something becomes relatable and maybe someone makes a shift. I know this sounds altruistic. I know it sounds like, if I can just affect one person, I'm not saying that. I don't want to affect one person. I want the entire room to be silent. If you're thinking about your Mm -hmm. DWP bill while you're watching me on stage, stage, or, or on the screen, go deal with the DWP bill. Hopefully, the work that I'm doing is making you think, "Oh my God, this, this, this is this is what is going on here." Or we're laughing so hard we can't keep ourselves together, like when you were singing right. at the karaoke. Oh, you know, right? You were so yeah, good. Let's go. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> Yeah. So you, you kind of brought up Viola Davis and, you know, DiCaprio, if you will, and talking about kind of how they go into it. So I'm curious, like post, you know, uh, Marymount, if you will, like, have you, or do you have kind of someone that's a teacher or a mentor or someone that kind of helps you, uh, to kind of expand upon, uh, your acting, you know, kind of, Everyone, these actors, Hollywood actors talk about like method acting or, you know, oh, she goes like so deep because of like this technique or this, this teacher. I'm just curious for you, kind of what has been your, right. your go-to. Right. Um, um, I was, I graduated from Loyola and I'm on my first job. It was a print job. Um, mm-hmm. And I was, um, you know, my agent called, she's like, you got a, you got a modeling job. I was like, yeah, because I'm a model. And then I get there and I'm like, way back over there and like and i was just like 
Okay. And this this guy who was there was really cool. His name was Kevin Campbell. Great guy. He says, you need to meet this woman. Her name is Stephanie Fury. And I said, Stephanie Fury? What do you mean, Fury? I'm like, oh, talk to me about it. And he was like, you just need to meet her. So I, I get on the phone with her and she says, you know, you can come to my class. And her parents are historical figures and titans in the, in the, um, acting world. And, um, uh, and I studied with her and did plays with her for the better part of a decade, I think, um, maybe seven years. Um, and then right now my teacher, uh, his name is Eric Morris. Um, mm. he's been around, he's 90 years old. He's an amazing wow. man. He, um, he challenges me to not be an actor. So I don't want you to be an actor. I want you to be an experiencer. I would rather take a mediocre experiencer than a great actor. He goes, because wow. if you're acting, I know where you're going to go. And if you can take some time and really be with this other person, like really be with them, and then use the, and have the words come out of that experience, have a choice, meaning like a, a person. Uh, he has this whole thing, obligation, choice, choice, approach. He's He's brilliant, and he really has – kind of guided me back to, he said, if acting isn't fun, you shouldn't do it. I said, mm. says who? <laughs> says Lee Strasberg. And I was mm. like, okay. I was like, I've never heard that before. So I don't think that's true. He goes, I don't need, he goes, he goes oh, really young buck? He goes, I, I don't, your belief in it doesn't mean that it's not true. And he, and he, you know, we battle, but we don't, we, at first we battled a lot. And now it's really about being with the other person and staying present and living. Um, I was talking about um, hearing someone singing, right? Remember a moment ago, right? And mm -hmm. we're doing a play reading with, I'm doing a play reading with Stephanie Fury because they have a new project and they asked me to come in and read and table read. And this w woman who's sitting next to me has to sing. I, I don't, I thought she was just going to say the words or they were going to play the song or whatever. She yeah. starts to sing. And the entire room was like, what? And we just stopped. Wow. It was so moving. She's so talented. And I love it. I was like, my heart was in my chest. I was like, she's so great. And and that's who I, I study with now. And, you know, I was just like, so I was in Chicago yesterday. Um, and my mom was talking about acting and giving me acting notes. And I'm like, thanks, mom. <laughs> Always nice to get notes from your mom. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I wasn't even doing anything. I was like sitting there. You make yeah. sure you enunciate when you do your scene. <laughs> I'm like, did I? Should I watch Yellowstone? Like, Yellowstone, oh guys. Want to watch Yellowstone? So good. So good. You know? I love it. Gotta love mother. <laughs> Gotta love mother. Yeah. Always there to give mom. you critique and criticism, yep. even if when you don't ask for it. Yeah. Whether you're an actor or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, um, it's my. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so I'm curious, kind of, you know, you talked about uh, the ego of an actor, right? In the sense that it can be very like isolating, but it also can be very much about self. So how do you, you know, get out of that in order, right? Because like, like you said, you had this kind of back and forth with, you know, this, this mentor, if you will. Um, so how do you kind of get out of your own way uh, when you need to go like deeper into the acting, but also not being an actor, right? Being the experiencer, as you said. Um, that's a great question. How do I, very specifically, I, act, I, I have to, there's this kind of like um, separation that has to happen mm -hmm. for me. I, I have to say, um, what is this fight really about? Mm. Am I scared? Am I angry? Am I angry at what this person is telling me? Or is this historical? Hmm. You know, is this about my mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, whatever? And, it t and it's a fine line. Because I have a sharp tongue and I I'm very quick to anger. And that is, that's, that's arrogance, right? And hmm. so, oh. Wow, it's, I don't like talking about this because it's like really, it, you know, it's ex it's exposing because it's like I really do, yeah. And and my my anger comes from insecurity, right? So I have to just check it. Am I really angry at this person about what they're saying, or is it I don't like it because I don't want to do it? What's the ulterior motive for me? And if I can have that kind of insight in the moment, and that takes skill, that takes that takes years of work. It right. takes years of understanding it. Now, my, now my niece who just graduated, who is an actor, um, she graduated from, from Chicago School of the Arts, Shy Arts as they call it. It's like she can do it like this because she doesn't have all of the 
uh, I was going to say, um, accoutrement, but the real word is baggage. Um, right. And <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> and she just gets it. She's like, Oh no, it's this, it's this, it's this. And she sees things very clearly. And I think that I, I have to, I just take a second and it has to happen quickly because things happen quickly in real time, right? There's no time to squabble over things when the, the camera's rolling or the things, things are moving or, there, or there's a setup or a change or whatever. And it moves very fast. Yeah. Um, how do I do it? I think that's it. I think I, 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 um, also in our faith, it's, it's being laser focused. Hmm. And so that when things move, um, I'm, I'm, I'm moving with them as opposed to yeah. fighting or going back and forth. It's very difficult. It's difficult. And sometimes it takes time. It's like being in a romantic relationship. It's like, it takes time to learn the other person and what makes them upset or, you know, and then where do I fit in? You know, what are my old, what's my old stuff? What's their stuff, you know? Right. Um, and having confidence in that. So yeah, yeah I, think, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. Thank you. Yeah. The, the internal battle, like you said, like this, this idea of anger constantly kind of being there yeah. is real for, I think so many people, but like, yeah, the fact that as an actor, you're able to then just kind of, like you said, turn it off because you're on a production, because you're working with other people, you have to kind of see the bigger project as the means to, you know, get the job done rather than just kind of being right. caught no, up in I, have, I have to interrupt you. Right. But I have to interrupt. I, I, I do not turn it off. I, mm. I allow myself the feeling. I, 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 I'm burning, I'm burning inside, but I'm still listening. And that's the, that's the thing, being able to navigate that way. I can still be furious at what you say to me, Alan, you could say something and I'm pissed right. and like, you know, um, and, but I'm still the ability to listen, even though I'm angry to, and then, and, and for me, anger is a very big motivator. Like if I'm really angry, uh, furniture is moving, like I'm, I'm, things are happening. Like I'm not, I get angry and I'm like, I'm angry. I don't get defeated that way. I get defeated different ways. Right. Mm -hmm. But anger to me is a motivator. Um, I don't like to be yelled at, but I'm saying anger is a motivator uh, that, that I, that when angry, I will still listen to the director. I will still listen to the notes. I will take the notes, but I, right before I go back into the scene or go back into whatever we're doing, I take a deep breath and I say, you're not here to service your emotions. I'm not mm. here to service my emotions. I'm here to service the emotions of Ibsen or what place this is uh, John Guare that's that's sitting here. Guare and and like you know or or David Mamet's another one. You know, it's like I'm here to service that, yeah. and I think that that's part of the charge of an actor um, and an artist to uh, be able to do both, live fully and service the play. Sorry if that's too jargony, but that's really how I feel about it. No, that's great. Thank you for yeah, yeah. leading into that and, and sharing it. Cause yeah, it, to me, based off of what you had originally said, I thought it was kind of turning off, but instead of you, you almost like using that fire, if you will, of anger as a fuel. I have, to, yeah. have to have to, because if I'm experienced, it's, it's, I want to be able to experience something in real time. Right. Like it has yeah. to be in real time. Like we're, you know, the, ca the cameras were going to catch a line in a second stage. The stage is like crafting a character. The camera is like really revealing myself mm -hmm. through this person. And that the, because I'm sitting in your home, right? I'm like on your TV screen at home or on your computer or whatever. And the stage, it's big, it's massive. And, and, um, you know, same thing with movies. They'll, they'll, it'll, 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 you know, I've seen a lot of actors who I think are great fall flat on their face. Um, and it's this exact reason. And so it's, that's why it's such a tricky thing. We talked about like, you know, the obstacles, like the personal obstacles, that's one thing. And then you have a whole nother set of obstacles, which is, you know, uh, professional. I think that if the personal is too loud, I can't do the professional. Right. That's, that's my humble submission. I know you see, you know, a lot of people, you know, who have, troubled personal lives you know ben affleck i was just watching a thing about how he dealt with alcoholism still hmm. making movies still making movies still made batman so it's yeah. possible you can do both yeah but i think for me if my personal life is too loud my professional life runs away somehow and vice versa mm. wow mm. powerful thank you yeah. for sharing um so going to the 
the whole concept of this podcast based on the lotus flower and like the simultaneity of cause and effect, uh, or like the, you know, the flower blooms, but it also seeds at the same time. But through the photosynthesis and muck underneath the water, you know, this beautiful blossom of the lotus kind of, you know, emerges. So I ask every guest kind of what is your like under shit struggle story that ultimately has led to like this kind of lotus of a creative life that you live? Oh right? God. I know. Like, simple question. Simple, simple question. No, wait. So you're asking me, wait, wait. What are the, the, the underpinnings of my life that are absolute, like, <laughs> like muck, dirt, yes. mud, yes. shit that, that have made my life great? You want me just to expose all? Okay, great. To the world. Yeah. Here we go, you Yes. Hi, hi, everybody. How you doing? Great. Oh, God. Um... You know, I think, I know that wanting people's approval, wanting my father's approval, um, you know, uh, and wanting him to say, you know, you did great, you did good, you know, I'm proud of you, Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you has been a big hamstring because I'm looking for that in places that that, that doesn't exist. Hmm. I'm looking for that in people that it doesn't exist. That, that they can't give it to me because quite literally they're not my father. You know what I mean? So, right. you know, um, and so instead of, and everyone's going to find their place in the world. You know what I mean? Like being the middle child, being the only boy, um, you know, um, having, um, um, you know, trying to find my way of uh, having two sisters that are, you know, amazing degrees and families and, you know what I mean? They do very well. And, you know, um, and being, you know, here solo in Los Angeles, it's, uh, I have to dig and say, okay, well, how am I going to make myself proud? Hmm. Um, you know, and, and, and not give my power away as the saying goes. Um, by, do you like me? Do you like every sentence? Hi, how are you? Do you like me? Hey, nice to meet you. Do you like me? Like that is probably a really big hiccup for me. Um, and I'm moving through it. You know, I have friends that, um, like you that keep, hold me accountable. You know, I think my friends like to hold me a little too accountable, you know, for some of their stuff too. But I think that, you know, um, I'm not saying it to you, um, (laughs) Um, but, uh, but I think those, those, uh, right. Um, but I think that there's, um, that's a big thing. I think that, um, that, um, wanting to be accepted, you know, and I think it's complicated with my upbringing and, you know, America and race and all of that stuff and culture and socioeconomics, it's all wrapped into one thing. And so I became like the good time guy. Hmm. You know what I mean? Throw the parties, make sure everybody's good. You know what I mean? The host, the this, it's a sub personality, right? Of like, yeah. of me, you know, this is, I'll do this, I'll do that. And so from that, I've had to hit the dirt. I've had to get thrown down and I've had to learn. I've had to learn to slow down and to put my feet on the ground hmm. and say, what do I want to do? I have so many flaws, right? But there's things I do well and focus on those things while trying to keep up with, you know, my, my big thing right now is communication. Hmm. Like I'm, I'm, I'm isolating in a certain way. I'm not getting back to people quick as quick as I would like to. And so, um, and the, uh, organizing that and that becomes a thing as well. Cause that affects all parts of our lives, right? Communication. So those are the yeah. things that are tough. I think, wanting a family and wanting to be in love and wanting to do all those things. Um, I'm forgetting that this is live and this is going to be all over the world. Jesus in heaven. Um, and, uh, and, uh, wanting those things. And I think that that's the muck that I, of like, I'm not worthy of it. I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of that, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. When, you know, I mean, I, I believe in my heart and I know that I am, but there's that voice, right. that voice, you know, and like my, my therapist said, give that voice a name. And once you give it the name and the, that those things come up, name the voice. Jimmy is the name. And I said, Jimmy, shut up. I don't know who Jimmy is. I don't know any Jimmy's, but Jimmy, shut up. I don't have time right now. 
I got dishes mm-hmm. to do or whatever I've got to do. You know, I got to learn these lines right now. So that is the absolute honest truth. And I can't wow. believe I told you. Good job. <laughs> right no, th- thank you for sharing though. Um, so to that end, you know, kind of what is, what do you see as kind of your, your Lotus blossom moment of life? If, if you will, like from all of that, how have you turned that into kind of this Lotus blossom? You know, it's amazing. So I was saying, I was just in Chicago yesterday and, and, and my niece, my nieces and my nephews Mm -hmm. that I, I am like, I'm like the jungle gym. Like there's a three-year-old, there's a seven-year-old and they're, you know, they're climbing all over me. We're having a great time for hours on end, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think there, that's one thing. I think the other thing is, what does it look like? Um, It looks like freedom. It -hmm. looks like joy. It looks like honesty. It looks like, um, love being loved and being lovable Mm. um it looks like fulfillment um it looks like uh lots of care uh and being challenged you know and that there's a challenge and there's a goal there's a campaign we have a new campaign thank you so much and so you know it's uh you know, um, I think that that is really, and, and, and I think that structure is good. And, and I, what it looks like is when I can create my own structure and then stick to it, stick to it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's one thing about that, that we going back to one of your earlier questions, you got to have stick to itiveness. You got to, if the, and also to, I mean, any young actor, people start show up on time. I just did this massive job. I mean, like, this A-list celebrity, I'm talking, she's won Grammys. She's won, I mean, she's hmm. been on, I mean, whatever. She's massive, massive, oh. massive, massive. Call time's 8.30. Show up about 8. I walk in the door by 8.15, 8.20, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm giving myself, let me not be, I was there at 8.22, let's just say. Yeah. No other actor showed up until 9.15. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't the believe fuck? it. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there and I'm like, where is everybody? So I'm in hair and makeup. So clearly, not a lot to do. Um, And so, uh, shut up, shut up. And so then they're like, okay, let's just hang out. So I'm just sitting in the makeup chair, just like, what's up, everybody? How you doing? I'm like, where is everybody? And and, and I can just hear the the second idea, the second second um, um, on the on the walkie on the cell phone, and I'm just like, show up on time. It'll it'll alleviate a lot of stress. Yeah, know what you're supposed to say. Little things like that. Um, uh, What does it look like? It looks like. And then doing jobs that are fun, having fun, mm-hmm. like, and even if it's like Dungeons and Dragons too, that's fun. Yeah. You know, that's fun. I mean, playing uh, Macbeth, that's still fun. I mean, I know we're talking about killing people and, you know, I mean, all the rest of it, you know, but, but it, you know, killing the king, that's still fun. You know, Star Wars, that would be amazing fun. Like, that's the thing I think that I'm a dreamer and I think it gets me into trouble because it seems pie in the sky like I don't have a plan. Hmm. But that's the plan. That's the plan. And things fall into place. There's faith involved, but there's, look, I was always taught that everybody, everybody loves a saint Hmm. because the saint comes by and says, you uh, are, you know, you are blind. Now you can see you're, you're lame. And now you can, you can walk or whatever the case Hmm. may be. But the, the reality is, is that the saint has to do all the hard work. And if I'm doing nothing, if I'm doing nothing, I'm giving the gift of of this art. People can be like, oh, wow, I want to be like that. Well, I want to be like that, too. I'm not that. So I'm playing that because it's what I've been given or I've earned. But I feel the same way you do. I felt the same way that my nephew did when he saw when he saw um, Karate Kid. When he saw right. Karate Kid, he was so boosted. He was so excited. That is a gift. And he and I will have that for the rest of our lives. And that's why I love this job. It's not really a job. I really think it's a vocation. Like I'm called to do it. If I could do something else as well as I do this, I would do it. Hmm. I would yeah. do it. If I could play the piano like and sing like you do, I would do that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, okay, that was great. Thank you for that. <laughs> In all seriousness, no, that was that was amazing. Um, so I'm curious, kind of, what has been maybe a personal achievement uh, that you ha- hold in high regard for yourself, uh, but maybe the the outer world, as you're talking about, that doesn't necessarily know about, but you have like the sentimental kind of personal achievement that uh, you really, you know, adore or love. Oh man, these are these are these are. Why did you give me these questions before? I don't. I, I will be, be better. For, I don't like these questions because um, I'm so like, don't talk about. Me. But here I am. Oh, it's all about me. you, exactly. I, yeah, I know. I know. And at some point, part of me is like, it, it, it should be all about me. What is what is a personal? What is a personal achievement that some people might not know about? Um. My entire career. I mean, I don't Shut think people, up. people. I mean, what is uh, people? No, what are people? Um, I did a commercial. There's two things. Two things. Um, I did a commercial for the World Cup, hmm. and um, and it was you know zoom in 500 frames per second. It's right on my face. It's for the, like the World Cup when you know, the U.S. went pretty far, and it was a night shoot. Um, and I had booked an Applebee's commercial in the same, the same day and they moved the Apple commercial so that I could do both. So I were at the Coliseum, get to work about 7 PM wardrobe, hair and makeup, blah, 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 hair and makeup. Nice joke. And then, um, we do, we shoot the commercial and then from there, um, they have a car waiting. I hop in the car you know, I'm like, I'm going to go. That's when that was like a thing, like a status statement. Get a car driver gets me back home. I go upstairs, brush my teeth, change clothes, a uh, quick shower, um, and then change clothes, obviously, then jump back down, then get in the car, <laughs> then drive me out, shut up, and then drive me out to, I think we were in Castaic. And we get to Castaic and um, Magic Mountain area, right? And we shoot mm-hmm. the whole Applebee's thing. And I was like the face. I was on TV every day. I was stopped all over the place. Maybe people know about that, but that the process. And then another one is um, um, I was the third understudy for uh, George Orwell's 1984. Um, and we did it at the Actors Gang. And Tim Robbins was directing it. And um, I get a phone call. And it's just, you know, is this David? I said, yeah. Who's this? He's like, it's Tim. And I was like, Tim who? He's like, Tim, your director, Tim Robbins. I was like, hello? Okay. And I told everybody in the room, shut up, shut, shut up. I'm like, how's it going, Tim? Like, so, I mean, I was, I still get, not starstruck, but I get like, wow, you know? Anyway, and I was new to the, to the, to the, to the company at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, he goes, great. So are you ready? I was like, yeah, yeah ready. Yeah, I'm ready. What, what, what are we doing? What am I ready for? He was like, Hello? I was like, yeah. He's like, you're going on, you're going on tour. You're part of the touring company. I was like, but I'm the third understudy. I don't go on to like it, t- for six more months. I have time to yeah. learn the lines. And there's a, there's a 15 minute monologue at the end of the play. Oh. And so he goes, no, well, you know, this guy, you know, he's really sick. The other guy, the second guy, he's having a baby, you know, next week. So he can't go. So you're up kid. He goes, I'll see you at the theater tomorrow morning at nine 15. Immediately Damn. sweating. I mean, everywhere you can sweat. I'm sweating. It was just wow. pop a mile down sweating. I was sweating. And um and uh I get to the to the theater at 9 15. Luckily for me, I had read, I had run the lights for the show. So I hmm. knew the end monologue by heart. Wow. So I knew because I knew where it's the person. So I'd heard it in my ears for three months. So I get there, I do it. He's like, Great, putting on a plane to Sioux Falls, South Dakota tomorrow. Great. Go home, pack, get out to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, start. So we're just going to do the end scene for you. We're going to run the show just for you, just get you acclimated. The whole main cast is there. And I'm on an Apple box because the guy that's playing the role normally is very tall. And there's a little mm. window. You just see my face. I have the mm. script in my hand and a mic in another hand. I'm standing on the Apple box. And out of nowhere, the Apple box starts to wobble. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, no. I toss the, I toss the script. I put my hand on the the, the, the wall where the window wall? is. It's not a wall. It's a, 
It's yeah, the set wall, it's a scrim, so it's fabric. And I put my hand <sighs> right through the wall. And I haven't been there for 10 fucking minutes. And I already have made a mess. And I could hear people like, where do they get this guy? And that's what they were saying. Where do they get this guy? They have to reconstruct, they have to break down the wall, reconstruct the whole thing. Anyway, play starts, audience is there. 12,000 people. 12,000 people. What? It's a brand new auditorium, all this. this. Finally, it's my moment to come out on stage. I have that 30 minute monologue. That's going to be 17 minute monologue. And I get out on the stage, and the actor, I just, I looked up and I saw the people. And the guy on the the guy I'm in the scene with looks at me. He goes, "Do you know your lines?" <laughs> and I said, "I said, I said, I got this." And then boom, 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 boom for 15 minutes, whatever it was, bang, just knocking it out. Hmm. And um, and we and we it was an amazing experience. And I got you know the curtain goes down, people are clapping, and, blah, 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 and I step off stage, and the entire cast tackles me. It's a big pile up, and everybody was like, "Who are you? How did this happen? You're amazing!" Blah, 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 blah. And it, wow. it really helped my confidence. Not do the same thing in in, um, in uh, Austin, Texas, and then um, I forget the other city we were in, and, and some other cities from there. So that's one I'm really uh, I'm proud of that. It gave me a lot of confidence that I know I know what to do. I know I know what to do, and I know how to do what it is I do. And that's Eric Morris taught me that as well. Reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's a long story. There it is. No, that was amazing. Kudos. Yeah. Sometimes I think it takes yeah. just one one thing like that in your career for you to kind of like. Yeah. understand that you have what it takes, right? It's that it factor that you're like, okay, right. I am on the right path. And so, yeah, those, those things stay yeah. with you for your life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, no yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So to flip the script <laughs> and this sounds like a job interview question, but it's not, uh, but what is your greatest weakness? But before you answer that, what steps do you take when you find that weakness kind of comes up and what do you do to kind of overcome it in the moment? So it doesn't go on further. Super simple. Um, my weakness is people pleasing. Mm. Super over talking, over talking, over talking. And uh, one of my buddies is always on me about it. He's just like, say less. And what do I do to um, combat it? Breathe. Remind myself that I have value. Sit. I just tell myself, sit down. Hmm. Sit down. Sit down. You know what I mean? Um, and then I start to breathe. And then I remember me walking in the room is takes up enough space. I don't need to be the chatterbox. Hmm. And it is a daily, daily um, exercise. And I think that it comes from not feeling that I'm enough. It's that simple. It's really simple. And maybe that sounds like really like kind of like weak sauce, like I'm weak when it's not that. It's just that it's that it's that thing uh, inside of me where I'm like, oh, let me impress people and then they'll like me or some kind of weird script and having just been with my family, I saw it a lot. Hmm. And I just said so little, um, which was, I was proud of myself about it. And that's little steps every day, but um, hopefully that's relatable to people. But um, my biggest weakness, yeah, that and like, you know, I fall in love every day. I mean, not like romantic love every day, but I fall in love every day. It's like staring mm-hmm. at the clouds or whatever. But and and sometimes it's for me, it's important to dig my heels in and, and have a very clear focus on my purpose. Mm-hmm. And if I have that, if I my my focus so clearly on my purpose, things fall into place very easily. Breathing remembering my value, doing things like ego workouts, like saying how, just telling myself, you're doing great. This is going great. You've got this going on. Remember this. Remember that. No need to fuss. You know, no need to chase. Oh, chasing. Thirsty people? Ugh. I mean, you know, and, and I find myself like, where is the water? My, my G, like, stop being so thirsty. Like, stop. And, um, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Definitely that. Wow. I want to like, I know this is interview me i want to interview you you and ask you these same questions live on youtube for the world to see <laughs> jeez Louise, what did I, for? I love it i love it 
No, I appreciate your honesty because I think that it is super relatable. And, you know, you and I actually, you sharing everything that you've shared so far, I feel like is like a mere reflection of me in that regard. Like there's so many relatable things. So yeah, I appreciate you being so honest and open about it to the world on YouTube and otherwise. Yeah. The dealing with that or reckon, I think recognizing the weakness in the moment or kind of, like you said, like having the almost internal talk to be just like cut it or sit down, you know, is like something yeah. all of us, you know, maybe try to do, but some people don't, you know? So the fact you do work on that or are trying to change it is huge. Yeah. I, it becomes, it becomes really loud. Like that, 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 um, that voice recently, mm -hmm. more recently now than ever in the history of my life. I'm just like, shut up. Stop. <laughs> people, please stop. Why? Like let them, you know, l less is more always, you know, as they say, but like, you know, I, I it, it, yes, shut up. As I talk for an hour, go ahead. Next, uh, next question. <laughs> yes, exactly. On to the next one we go. Uh, so <laughs> to top that off, when, when did you know that you made it in this <laughs> career or what, what has been a highlight of your career thus far? <laughs> Dead ass serious. <laughs> Wait, what's the first part? Did I, did I... <laughs> uh, no. So has there I'm been gonna, something when I find as it? <laughs> I'm going to find where you live and I'm going to freaking kill you. No. So has there been a yeah. moment as an actor that you've really been working towards where you felt like you had quote unquote made it right. Or a specific highlight in your career that you're like, damn, this is, I mean, you kind of already mentioned that with the, the play that you're talking about, but something that more maybe you seen more as an accolade to the outside world than um, just a personal. Oh uh, Yeah. I'm I'm a I'm I'm on a um I don't I don't really feel like I've made it so much. I think I'll feel more like you know it's so crazy is that I maybe I'll feel like I've m made it once I kind of have some like outward things like a mm -hmm. own a home or something like that. Like maybe that's the, mm -hmm. the barometer because of my Midwestern or like have a home, have the white picket thing. Right. I don't really think like that so much. I think more like when do I feel like I've made it? I did the pilot of Grey's Anatomy. Um, oh. and, um, it was just, it was just a, like a doctor show and I played a paramedic, whatever. Um, and then it turned into years and years of work. That was a highlight for, that's been a highlight for sure that I'm up for some stuff for, uh, Shonda now is really exciting. I mean, obviously the, the, we're in the middle of the writer strike at this present moment. Right. But, um, right. but oh, God willing that, you know, once it's resolved, that gets back, get picked back up, but highlights, um, so here's one. Okay, here we go. So um, I'm doing this series called um, Sleeper Cell. It's on Showtime. It's the same group of people, some of the same people that made Homeland uh, okay. with um, Carrie. And um, and there, this whole thing where um, we shut down where the 110 and the 101 meet. So for those that are not in LA, like that's Damn. like the main downtown thoroughfare. That's like massive. We shut it down for 20 minutes and they said, so it's, and it's a chase scene. I get out of the passenger seat. I run after this guy. The cars come, they're coming this way. So there's like 20 stunt cars going one way. I'm going the other way. I have to like wow. run and jump over a car and kick the door closed, freeze, you know, all that stuff. Um, and it was my moan. And I was, the stunt coordinators are working with me and it was amazing. It was, am it was to me, this is the moment. And it was my fourth mm -hmm. episode out of four. Like I was like, this is my final m moment here and all this stuff and this and that. And we shoot it and it's great. It's awesome. I'm, I am Tom Cruise Jr. Um, yeah. I am Carmel. I am Carmel, uh, Tom Cruise. And then I have all these people over cause we're going to show them the scene and this and that. And they cut the scene. They cut the scene out of the whole episode. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You've wow. got to be kidding me. So they just have a part of the scene, like the dialogue part. In. Either way, um, either way, I feel that when I'm working and I'm in the moment and it's really fun, that's when I'm, I feel I've made it. I, I don't, mm. I have this commercial running right now for this, uh, this thing called Manjaro. It's a, it's a diabetes, um, a medicine. And mm -hmm. my face is everywhere. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. It's fun. It's fun. I have more fun when people are making fun of me about it 
than I do <laughs> when I'm drinking. That's to me. That's my sense of humor, though. My sense of humor is really like if I like you, I'm gonna tease the hell out of you. If I don't like you, I'm just like yeah. I can't do it. But right. um, but I you know I roast for my birthday one year. You know what I mean? It's like that's my life. Um, yeah. and I, I it's been really fun to be able to have people be like, oh my god, look at you, you got diabetes, you know, and uh, <laughs> and, and we. And, you know, and that's fun. I think that's it. That I mean, and, and every time I get to share stuff like that for commercials or for television or plays or whatever it is, um, uh, movies, um, uh, that's that's when I feel like I've made it. And I have a movie coming out. I think this this year, um, mm-hmm. and it's my first on screen kiss. It's it's very uh, it's very wow. funny, uh, and it's a great director and. Um, you know, drove 11 hours up north to get there, did it, and then drove 11 hours back down. And, uh, I got to be with some of my best friends. And so mm-hmm. that's definitely a career highlight as well. So incredible. I love that. So yeah. speaking of love, yeah. uh, going down that road, <laughs> on, on, your first on screen kiss. Um, yeah. What is your, uh, how has that been to navigate like Los Angeles in this, you know, in this world of, like acting and everything because you're like, you have a face, like you said, you're on the, you know, literally on ads on my Instagram feed, I'll be scrolling and David will pop the fuck up for this, this drug. And I screen cap it and send it to him in a DM. But I'm curious kind of, you know, because you're an actor and because, you know, you're, you're a successful actor, you're working, you know, like, how does that kind of affect the ability for you to like also be in a relationship and, and does it need to be with someone uh, that is also in the industry or not? I'm just digging deep here. We're just like, we're just digging a hole for something. I, I, I am going to get you, buddy. I'm going to get you. Uh, does it affect my ability to date? I think I affect my ability to date more than anything else. Uh, um, I, uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, I don't need to be uh, with someone that's in the industry. I am, I, I, uh, I'm so mad at you. Um, <laughs> and cut so, that cut. <laughs> no, all right. No, there's five. We're here. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, am, I, I'm not. I'm not. That doesn't. It, yeah, it's not happening. It's not. It's not. It's not happening right now. And so, mm. I. Uh, how, how does it affect me? I think that I know. I know that when I am right and I'm in rhythm, I attract the right person for me, and that's it. Hands down. Mm. I'm not on. Oh. Yesterday, my buddy was like in Chicago. He was like, "Yo, I saw you on the my, my girl saw like, like his girlfriend. His we've mm-hmm. all known from high school. Um, oh wow! He's, oh yeah, Shelly saw you on the dating app, and I was like, on the what? Yeah, she saw you on Bumble. I was like, I've never been on any dating app. Like that's not that's not real. I was like, mm-hmm. screenshot it and sent it to me, and he sent it to me. He sent it to me, and I was yeah. like, low key, like there's like pictures of me from my Instagram that were put together, and I was oh, like, shit. I reported it, and whatever. Yeah, I was like, whatever. But I mean. It, I, I won't, I don't do that. I, I want to, cause I know how I get, I get like just too syrupy. It's like, you know what I mean? It's too much. It's, it's like, it's like Coca-Cola. It's like a little too, it's a little too, I can taste the chemicals. Like I get too much. I have to learn the balance of navigating all things and also seeing the person as they are as opposed to what I want. I'm romantic. You know, I'm a hopeless romantic about things like that. My, my, mm. my, my, my aunt called me a hopeless romantic when I was like five. Wow. I sobbed and cried because she. I said she called me hopeless, <laughs> and then my my mom's like, oh, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> could you just take it easy?" And so, um, does it affect my ability to date? No, I, I, but I just I think for me, I I want to be, um, in a really good rhythm, um, and then and then kind of like double dutch and have someone kind of come in with me and and go that route. And but I look forward to falling in love. I look forward to. I mean, I. I mean, I'm, I've 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 been in love a few times in my life, and I I, I look mm. forward to that stuff. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's beautiful, you know, when you have someone that really cares about you and you care about them in the same way. It's like your your person fuss and fight because I'm you know I'm not I'm not you know as my sister called me a big scoop of a strong flavor of ice cream. You know, um, <laughs> wow, what uh, a title! You know, <laughs> I know, I know, that's what I call you, but um. <laughs> but um uh, <laughs> but uh yeah, that was good but thank you but yeah i yeah i look forward to being in love and um you know um finding the right woman and doing all that stuff yeah 
So David Haley yeah. is single and ready to mingle. That is what we're taking away from this. Oh, I don't know. But I don't. <laughs> you will not find him on the dating yeah. apps, but maybe you'll see him on set and you'll fall in love. We'll see. To be continued. Yeah. But we'll, put, we'll put it back. <laughs> There'll be my, a part my two. Niece my, my, my niece saw my Instagram and my Instagram is David Haley loves me. And uh-huh. she's like, and she's like, what are you trying to say? I was like, <laughs> dude, I love wow. you. Like, Your niece. And she, oh, yeah. She had an attitude. She was like, and she snatched the air at me. She's like, what you trying to say? I was like, why you got your head like this? And so we were back. <laughs> why you got to twist it up? Little sis? Hello. That's so funny. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> she came correct for you on that one. Um, that's so good. Um, so wow. looking to your, your past and uh, coming to LA and kind of getting things going out of college and everything, what did you find, uh, happiness in then and joy and or joy versus now? Like, what are the differences that you see between like when you first started out versus like where you're at now and what brought you happiness and joy then and now? Okay. So, um, then it was definitely about popularity. Hmm. I love being, I love being a cool kid in school. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love, I love having fun and organizing the crew together and getting us to go to do something or whatever like that. And, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to be on the show tonight. Come watch it. We're going to have a shooting. Um, I love that. I love that was definitely, it was definitely external. Well, now it's like, I want to play characters where, and I think I'm a master at this. I really think I'm good. I said, I've never said that out loud. Goodness gracious. Of finding text that, or writing text that I am actually literally experiencing in the moment, or I'm seeing someone else going through it, so I choose them to work with. Hmm. Um, whether it's in class or shooting, scene, doing scene work, or 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 it's a, a movement class with my my uh, friends, my great friend and teacher Jenna. Um, you know, she finds a way to um, uh, have me embody. Um, whether it's an an animal and I try to relate to my life so that it's not just you're watching me act like a horse or a, you know, gorilla or whatever it may be, you know, um, or a hawk or whatever, whatever random thing in movement, but also in real life, what scenes am I working on? And I think Stephanie Fury um, and, you know, um, you know, that team at the Firelight Collective, Nathan, everyone there, um, they do such a good job of casting people who are really going through similar things so that it, it's, you're in the, you're watching it and you can't help but be affected. And right now, right now, especially we need to be rattled up a little because we've been in, been in a house for three years or two years right. or whatever it's been. And the, the effects have been so serious. I know that it's, that it's, that it's embodying characters that, that, that push the envelope. This new mm-hmm. play I'm doing, it's like, it's, it's intimate. It's intimate. Uh, I mean, definitely for me. And um, luckily I have great partners, but what brings me joy, and I, I guess it goes back to the people pleasing thing, maybe, I don't know, but bring other people joy and having them have insight into their own lives and us be able to talk about it after the show in a week, in two weeks, hang out with them. You know that those moments where you're at a party or you're having at a dinner party and you have those intimate moments, those quiet moments. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is magic. I love that. And I think that my art allows me to do that in a way that's very, very special. And I think that I'm getting better and really, really much better at, at doing it. Mm. So you you spoke about doing both stage and, uh, you know, also being on in film as well as television. Kind of what is your favorite uh, genre, if you will, or if, if you can't even favorite one of them, but like what kind of – uh, each of them are so different. So kind of how do you feel, right. you know, you're talking about being on stage, kind of bringing out that expression, having these intimate moments. So I'm curious uh, how you kind of divvy those, those three up. Um, I like the one that pays me the most. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Drop the mic. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. No, no, I, 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 uh, I, I think right now, right now, it's hard. It's hard. I think right now, whatever we just got offered a movie. When I say we, I mean like we got an offer from a film company today. We're going to offer David this this role with this amount of money, and here's the character, and he doesn't have to audition. Just a straight offer. It's called right. Nice. And my agent said no. He goes. He goes no, no. I don't want you to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. He goes. It's not. It, it's not enough 
It's not enough. There's no, there's no there there. Um, mm-hmm. And although the money is okay, don't do it. And I talked with a good friend of mine. He was saying, he's proud of me for turning it down because normally people please are, yeah, of course, I'll do whatever anybody offers me. No, 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 no. Right. Slow down. Sit down. Mm. Sit down. Slow down. That voice. Yeah. Just take a little look here and see, and see what's what. What gives me the most joy, I think, is I think having people having conversations with great roles, I think, um, or good roles, fun roles, funny stuff. I did a play called It's Just Sex. Um, mm. and it's the, it's a, um, um, it's, um, a, a docudrama about your life. Hmm. Um, I mean, your life, Alan. Um, oh, my, and, oh, wow. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad they made a play. Right. Exactly. Thank you. The play's called. I'll have to go see it. Let me, let me rewind. Wow. I got to work on that humor. Um, it, the play is called It's Just Sex. And it's, it's, it's LA's longest running comedy. Um, okay. and it's about three couples that one night all get together. They're all, they, they have their monthly hangout and they want all get drunk and they swap. Hmm. And the reaction, we got nominated for an NAACP award. It was a great, it was, it was amazing. I made lifelong friends and it was amazing every night, every yeah. night people were like, Oh my God, could I ever have sex with, you know, so and so and so? It was like this thing, this, this thing about intimacy and, uh, and physical intimacy and, and loyalty and honesty and all this stuff. But really, it was just a good time. Yeah. You know, it was a good time. Like, I, my, my new criteria isn't like, yo, can this guy, like, yo, or this per- girl, this person, can they, you know, help my career? Like, you know, people act that way in a certain way. My thing is really like, are you a good hang? Like, are you a good hang? You know, um, clearly with that loud, loud engine, that guy's not a good hang. Um, but it's, uh, are you a good hang? And I think that's the criteria for me right now. And, and what brings me joy, hanging out after the show or after the screening, that's always fun. Going, having a cocktail and just, you know, catching up and, and having a, building a community here in LA. And, and New York oh. too, New York too. Amazing. So I'm curious, you know, yeah. everything, you're like, for how many fucking more questions? <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing I know. Great, David. I know. I'm just, <laughs> great. I mean, it's, so we're good. live, baby. You know what I mean? We're live. Everybody, we're yeah. live. How are you? We are How's live. everybody doing out there? You guys still here? The seven oh, people? So are you guys are here? <laughs> exactly. All, all, There's 700? 700 people, you know. It's not your, oh your 12,000 full stage, full, you know, theater moment, but I apologize. <laughs> but we'll do our best here, okay? Sorry. Okay. I know, I know you need a big audience to be able to present fully, but uh, we're doing our best here, David. So, yeah. yes, no. here on the Creative Lotus no, podcast, Asian. virtual interview. No, <laughs> oh, so good. Love it. Um, so I'm curious, kind of, what is your work ethic like being in kind of like a day-to-day, you know, you, you literally just picked up off of your table, like three different plays that it seems like you're reading or working off of as well. So I'm just curious, like as a working actor and someone who does audition a lot and do self t- does self tapes, you know, like what is your day in the life like on a regular basis uh, as an actor? Good question. It's a really good question. Uh, it depends on the day, but usually in the morning I have, and this is going to sound bonkers. People are like, What? I have about four auditions due by 9 a.m. almost every day. Wow. Almost every day, whether it's voiceover. Usually it's voiceover. Mm -hmm. um, And then from there. So I'm up early. I can't. I have this thing right now in my life where when I wake up, my brain turns on and I can't Mm -hmm. turn it off. So my therapist told me, she she said, just get up. She says, don't toss and turn and be like, I can't. So just get up. Um, So I'm up. Um, and immediately I drink this like relaxation tea. I can't have caffeine because my anxiety goes bonkers. So I have this like tea and, um, and then I just go over what I need to get done. Um, and then I create a little sound booth in my, in my like hallway and, uh, I knock out these auditions. Then it's, uh, relabeling them. Then it's, um, uploading them to the iCloud. Then it's going to each specific Dropbox for each specific audition. Um, wow. that's for VO. And then if I have a, I would say once a week, it's commercial once every other week, maybe. And, um, it, those sometimes are in person, but if not, I have a setup right behind, right here with a ring light and, and, um, I sit and record those, you know, and, and then from there, it's editing them down and doing the slate and all the rest of it. And then from there, uploading that. 
you know, before the writer's strike, it was the same difference. So, um, for, for theatrical stuff. And then from there, I'm usually done with that by 10 30, uh, wow. AM. Um, yeah. and, and from there, Ooh, and from there I will, uh, I have to get out of the house because then yeah. I'll, if I sit here, I'll just start to cook. I'll just start to cook. So I'll, I, <laughs> I do this walk now where it's, I used to walk like, like a serious, like three mile, two and a half mile walk. Now I'm just like, let me walk around the block. Just around the block. Yeah. Let's just walk around the block and see what we get. See what we get. And then from there, I have a class on Tuesdays. And, and I do that most of, from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And I do that to stay in shape. Um, mm. And I do have these plays here. And I'm reading constantly. And I have friends that are making movies and are filmmakers and are executives. And they'll send me stuff to read. And maybe I'm making notes. Or sometimes I'm on the couch. And I'm watching a movie. Um, and then at night or in the early afternoon, if I have to bartend or if I have to, you know, help a friend with a, you know, self tape of their own, I mean, it, it's like a job. It's, there are, are other jobs I have and have to have. Um, yeah. you know, and I've been in restaurants and, you know, as, you know, uh, people call them survival jobs, survival jobs, but they're just great mm -hmm. job. I mean, it's a great job. Like being a bartender, yeah. so, so much fun, you know, get the whole court and, you know, talk to great people and all that stuff. So, um, and then I, as of late have been in bed early, like nine 30, 10. Um, mm. uh, so I haven't been, you know, I'm not like you, I'm not on Bumble, you know, I'm literally <laughs> at home, um, uh, trying to, you know, um, oh, God. figure it out, but no. And then, but, and then other times of, of course, Buddhist meetings and there's other responsibilities with, with that, but, um, yeah, that's what I, that's that's kind of a day in the life. And then on, on the great days, I get to work. Right, I get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Says you got to work the next day, so I'm up really early. I'll record the stuff because my age, vo voiceover agency mostly is in New York. I get to you know um, record the stuff and go to work on um, what was the last show, uh, Young Sheldon, you know, or uh, mm. uh, the commercial I just did. And I'm up eight thirty to four thirty, and you know, work. It's great. I, I have to say, if I talk about it like this. My life sounds amazing, you know. I sound like a very eligible bachelor. Very eligible. You are. Is that your next? Is that your next picture? <laughs> <laughs> the bachelor. Is that my wife on what ABC? Oh, David uh, Haley is our new bachelor. Imagine? Could you? <laughs> it. I would tune I, in. It would be a show. Listen. <laughs> it would. Be, it would be a show. Here's why. I couldn't go home. I, I couldn't come here to my place. People would be outside yeah. just ready to make fun of me. Like I, I would, I would, it would be the roast machine. Like people's so love good. language with me, which is so strange, love to roast me and make fun of me. Could you imagine I'm on the bachelor kit out? No yeah. way. On all these billboards, yeah. just driving down Melrose, Sunset Boulevard to see David Haley holding a rose there, just holding on with a, a nice suit on. Yeah. Smoky, smoky eyes, just looking into the distance. <laughs> just like that exactly. my little nephew my, my my little nephew he's he, he just turned four um mm. and he does this thing he goes he'll be like uncle david oh, he nice. just learns the brows. His eyebrows down. and he's Love so it. and i'm like what are you trying to communicate to me buddy what are you saying <laughs> like that he's a badass basically what he's trying to say yeah. um that's fun so oh, good gosh What's one thing that you've learned about yourself in this industry that you kind of didn't know prior to coming into it? I mean, you, you jumped right into it right out of school. So, um, yeah, but if there's anything specifically that, pops out. Uh, uh, that I, I have a lot of grit, I have a lot of grit. I do. I will not give up. I will not quit. Mm -hmm. Now there are some things that I need to quit that I don't because I, I'm, I, I, I become delusionally um, attached and um, uh, as my, as my niece taught me, not delusional, you're the Lulu. Um, <laughs> that's the term now. Oh, don't get the Lulu. Don't get the Lulu. The Lulu. Oh, um, I kind of like the, that. Lulu. Now, you know, now everybody knows on, on YouTube and the world's the Lulu delusionally like attached to seeing it through loyalty is a big, uh, that's the thing. Loyal, 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 mm -hmm. loyal to a fault. I, that's the, I think maybe it, it's the weakest, not the, well, yeah, maybe the weakest muscle I have, like learning how to just say, oh, this is done, go, drop it, walk away. Yeah. And, and I used to be able to do that for some reason, but something, I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know how I, that became a weak muscle, but either way, um, 
uh, the grit that I have, the staying power that I have, you know, to be here for 20 some years, you know, and, 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 and not, I, I it's not like a, about giving up because there's no give up. Cause you know, when you want something, you do it, you, you try five different ways to get it. You know what I mean? Right. It's like you were talking to me about your dating life and there's this one person that you like and you were like, okay, I'm going to show up at their job. I'm going to show up that you, that you were saying that you like this. No, that wasn't you. Anyway. Um, so. Shady. The, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to get me back on the show. I see it. I see it. I get it. <laughs> Clever. Oh my god! So, you're like, oh, you're not gonna wait. You're not gonna wait. You're gonna have an attitude. You on, on my own show. On my own show. Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. Uh, and so, so um, no, but just there's five different ways you. I will go about it. And if I don't get what I want, I keep trying until literally someone will say, "Hey, bro, you gotta." You have to tap, just stop, just stop, just choke. Something else is for you. And I think, but there, there is that thing about having that. I don't like rise and grind. I don't like that terminology. I don't like that logic. I don't like that at all. Um, makes me yeah. really anxious to hear people talk like that. Um, because it kind of leaves, I, my, I leave myself out. I do that enough mm. already. But, and I know I say I get up early, but I mean, I'm not like, yeah, let me do 25 million push-ups and then I'm going to, you know, call five agencies. It's like, shut up. Just shut up. Yeah. No one likes you. Um, and so, um, uh, but yeah, I keep saying the same thing. It's grit and, um, and loyalty are two things that are, um, that are, that are really in my face mostly, um, that I realize I have and, and I lean on it and I remind myself of it when I get down. Or I'm thinking I'm really tired and want to quit. Like meaning, like I'm just going to take a week and go to like I don't know Santa Barbara and like mm. pitch a tent on the beach or something. Like not, you know, it's like I don't just get away. It's like no, now is the time to go in. Now is the time when it gets tough. When it gets tough, that's when it's like you're right there. You know, sometimes you know, um, yeah. we've all been there. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. Oof. Yeah. Thank you for helping me remind myself about this. Yeah. No, I think you make a really valid point because I feel all creatives kind of go through that exact thing, which is like, yeah, it, it does sound great. Like, I feel like I never leave Los Angeles because I'm constantly working and doing stuff. So then that thought, like you said, is like, right. let me just go and take a week in like Santa Barbara or wherever, Palm Springs, whatever, and get the hell away. But then it's like, no, you, what are you really deterring yourself from doing? And like, yeah, like lean into it more, not in that gross kind of like rise and grind kind of way, just for like, for the TikTok of it all, if you will, but really just kind of like, <laughs> Yeah, you 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 want you want to actually do this because like there's like you said there's a passion and there's like a a grit that you want to do it not because like you feel like I got to do it because you know someone's telling me to so yeah it's finding yeah, that balance because, if, because yeah finding the balance but also like I'm very good with direction like give me you want to you look let you want to get to San Francisco great let's find five different ways to get there. You know mm. what, and we you you can pick, we can pick which way together we want to go, yeah. and this is such a tough job. You know, I was around my it was my niece's graduation. I was in Chicago, as I've been saying three or four times already. That like I'm around all these families and couples and kids and all this stuff, and they have a regular and they you know they go to soccer practice and then they take them to you know karate or then they take them to drawing class or whatever gymnastics was a big one. And there's yeah. all this stuff. It's like, well, I mean, that's, that's, I, I would dream for that um, mm. in a different life. If I could do it, that would be an actor. That would be amazing. Yeah. And God willing, let's hope that's how it all works out. Cause I have a lot of friends who have kids who are actors, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and um, I know it's possible, but, but I look at their life and it's set up. They kind of have it. Like they know where they're going. I have no idea what's going to happen a mm-hmm. month from now, a month from now, my life could be completely yeah. different. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, sure. let's just say the writer's strike doesn't happen. Let's just say that that ceiling doesn't get that, that it, that it, you know, it, they don't mess the whole thing up. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let's just say that they pass legislation. Let's just say that SAG works something out to produce. And all of a sudden uh, the series that I'm up for right now, literally right now, while I'm talking to you gets, starts back up and the character comes right back on and they say, great, it's time for you to go to work. This job will change my life. It's five mm-hmm. months of work. I have no wow. idea. 
I have no idea. I have no idea. What if they take the, the, the drug commercial and they go, cool, we're going to re-up you for the next two years at X amount of money. And right. then I'm like, cool. You know, um, Alan, don't call me. I don't know you anymore. Um, <laughs> Delete the tapes, motherfucker, because we ain't going to air none of this. <laughs> delete 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 ain't got time for it i don't know you don't call me and i'll see you never he's like type 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 click (laughs) yeah you make a really valid point though nothing is in the in the can if you will you know for you in the next like month even what do i do yeah i mean it, it has to be about balance it has to be luckily for me i have great friends like i have the best friends anyone could ask for you know um and so you know i i our, our buddhist practice is a big part of my life um you know chanting nam myoho renge kyo is a thing that, that gets me so centered and it actually clears away a lot of the cobwebs so that then purpose which i think is essential becomes clear and if the, pur- yeah. the purpose gets clear then everything becomes clear and then, and then, act, no, excuse me. Purpose becomes clear. Then action becomes clear. And then, then from there, there's then, then I can plan the day, I can plan the month, and then back go backwards. I always like, what's the end goal? I take every step backwards to to mm. to today, to this moment. At you know what I mean? Uh, in, in the afternoon that we are here in, in Los Angeles, it's like, and then figure out what the steps are from there. Yeah. That's what I think. That's, 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 but it's, it boils down to purpose. And how do I, then the question is, how do I understand what, what is my purpose? Well, what do you want? Yeah. What do you really, what, how can I get quiet enough to really ask and answer that question and have the courage to answer that question? Really though, hmm. really, you know, um, you know, someone said, you know, um, uh, we were having this conversation with Mongo and someone said, I really just want to be famous. I mean that. I want to be famous. I said, well, hmm. why are you being an actor? You don't need to be an actor to be famous. I was like, you know, my mom, when she goes into the Macy's, the, no, Lord and, Ta- Lord and Taylor in, um, in, hmm. in, in Chicago, in the suburbs, she buys, she buys so much makeup. Hmm. When my mom goes into the, the Volkswagen place, the dealership, she buys a new, she leases a new car almost every time. Wow. She's going to kill me if she hears about that. Uh, if she, when she hears about it, she's going to kill me that I just said that on, 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 on YouTube for everyone to see. But, but, but she's, she walks in the room and everyone's like, Miss Haley, Miss Haley, oh, Miss Haley, Miss Haley, Miss Haley. It is like everyone, that's famous. That's fame. That's fame. That is fame. I don't small scale fine. So, you know, if you want, I just said, don't, 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 please, please leave. The rent's high enough here. Get out of here. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I think the goal has to be, uh, for me to stay sane, uh, friends, purpose, class, reading, practicing my faith. Um, and having a faith community and making it about other people, not all about me. Mm. Jesus in heaven. You know, I mean, oof, yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> that's awesome. So I'm curious, yeah. you know, who has been like your biggest supporter or fan that's really kind of helped you to keep going through, you know, this, the longevity of your career thus far? You. Well, oh, shut up. Get out of here. Um, my, you're my biggest fan. Um, no, um, that's true. Yes. My family, right? My mom, for sure. Um, I can go on. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, it's taken, I'm such a case. It's taken a, a community of people, you know, uh, my Buddhist practice for sure. Um, my mentor of faith, you know, that's like for sure is one. Um, uh, the Hamilton family, um, the Jennings family, I can go on. Um, the biggest, the biggest, uh, you know, my, you know, I think, I think, I think my obstacles have also been a big thing. Uh, the Brock family is another one. The great, you know, Tara and Eric, um, unbelievable people who, you know, really have been a great support. I, I know that the obstacles have really helped me. Um, relationships, like the romantic relationships have been big, 
um, obstacles. Some, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't never starts that way, but it ends that way. And I have to then regroup and, and get myself back together and figure out what's what and get stronger and get, and I, and I, and I don't mean this like, I mean, I, let, me, let me say what I mean. Then. Uh, I get tougher, get that grit comes back in, um, and remind myself, um, and then I have to, I have to do a lot on my own, but the biggest supporters are those people. It's not one, it's a, it's a team of people and, um, my Chicago family, for sure. I lean on them. I lean on them sometimes. And other times I'm like people pleaser. Yes. But also being able to listen and get, have insight, you know, listen and have insight. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. What kept you going through COVID and into 2023? You know, like the, this podcast was actually born out of COVID because I had way too much time to think about the creative process. And, you know, like I said, at the beginning of this, you know, the idea of the Lotus flower, like, you know, we're in a shitty time right now because we're all in the a world pandemic, but like still creatives find a way to your point of having grit, like still find a way to create no matter what. So I'm curious what your ex- personal experience was like uh, going through COVID. Um, oh yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, uh, it was, uh, up in the morning, uh, chanting, practicing Buddhism, reading a little bit, um, watching movies and then having a glass of wine, uh, with Mm -hmm. lunch. Uh, and then it was, and that led to, that was like five days a week. And then I had to get out of that habit and then it was like, okay, great. So let's figure out what's new. And then getting with, I had a small bubble of friends, you know, a small bubble. And I was, I was in, I was living in St. Louis for a little bit of it. Like I was exploring that city because I've never been there before. Uh, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, it was tough. It was tough. I was isolated. I, you know, what got me through sports. Hmm. Um, my sister called me and said, we need help here at the house. We need help like with the kids and work. And it's very difficult. And, you know, she was working, finding, you know, housing for people that are experiencing homelessness um, that had COVID. Um, mm. And so every day she was, she would come home, she was working 14, 15 hours a day. So I was with the kids, wow. you know, her three kids and, and it was, I mean, and her husband was great. It was great. Uh, family helped a lot. Um, mm. How did I get through it? I think what's happening now is that all of the kind of, not kind of all the projects that have been on my mind and in my heart for all this time are now happening because I'm going to start creating them. And I want to, um, I would definitely pick your brain about how to do that uh, more specifically, but that's how I did it for sure. That, I mean, it was, it was an amalgamation of things, but um, it, 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 it was hard. It was, it was mentally exhaustive. It was exhaustive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and I don't, I don't feel like I'm all, I think I'm just now coming back, if I'm honest, um, yeah. in terms of confidence, in terms of losing the weight, in terms of getting my head back in the game and being clear, um, and then getting COVID. I got a job. Um, mm. it's, it was a TV show called First Ladies with Michelle Pfeiffer and Viola Davis. And, um, right. and, um, I was getting ready to go to Atlanta. It was a Showtime show and I, you know, I, my bags were packed. I leave in the morning. I was at a friend's house and, you know, get together and, and it's all outside and spaced out and all the rest of it. And I got a phone call. It was like, you have COVID. You're not, you, you're getting fired. And I was wow. like, damn, I don't have COVID. So I called my agent and freaked out. And I was like, what is going on? And he's like, how do you feel? I was like, I feel fine. I feel fine. What are you talking about? Let's go. Let's go. No. And I lost, I lost that. That was, that was, so it was hard. A lot of things were hard, you know, um, hmm. a lot of things were challenging, but how did I do it? Very carefully. And I, and each day I know I can fall back into the rhythm of doing my work, getting it done. Um, and then being done by one or two and having a glass of wine and putting my feet up and watching Netflix for the evening. And I don't think that that's a really creative thing. Um, mm. I think that, and I think people like you and I at least need to be creative. It helps us. And we have a lot to say and a lot to offer. You have a lot to offer yeah. the world, you know? So it's, uh, I hear that. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Um, so a few more questions, I promise, and then I'll let you off the hook. Um, what is, we're looking to the future now. So what are some goals that you have maybe for the next like three to five, even 10 years from now, you kind of mentioned projects that you've, you know, been simmering on and want to kind of create, but, you know, do you have kind of a vision for the future that you really want to, you know, embody? Absolutely. Uh, there's a few things. One, it's a um, a short film. I want to do short. F- I mean, I could make this into a feature. That's fine. But I want it to be a mm. short film because I feel that people in the world, in the, in the land of TikTok and the land of all the rest of it, um, that short form works well. 
I have you included some of the most talented friends in the business and in making a short film that, for a script that I've written that is really, really funny, poignant. Um, there's, you know, love making and anger and, you know, all kinds of chaos. That, making that, um, doing this podcast about sports that I did for three years and then actually f- making sure I, I can get the rights to it because we haven't been doing it and shoot it mm-hmm. here um, at my place and do that. Um, and then um, over the next five, three to five years, personally fall in love or be in love, be happy, mm-hmm. um, grow, become a great listener, an even better listener, projects, really do a show that I love and get paid really well and be able to go and travel and take care of people and make sure things are okay. And, and, and that's more what I'm thinking more broadly, not as specific. And then maybe I need to yeah. get more specific about it, but over the next five years, own a home or a condo or whatever, do have that in order. Um, personally doing that, that will be, a, I mean, definitely is a goal for the next three years, uh, and enjoy this ride enjoy the ride because it's it's been a long one so uh and i I, you know and we're just i'm not even halfway done so it's like okay and then continue to write continue to write be consistent show up and enjoy this ride and and challenge myself to to just do be better be good you know do good yeah amazing those are huge goals and yeah i love it huge it's huge you know what i mean i'm not you know what i mean it's like well i hope i you know, it's not right. It's like I'm like, oh, well, you know, I think I want to go. No, it's like this is my life. Like, let's go. Like, let's go. Yeah, let's go. And I want to move with the team. I want the entire crew to move forward. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want us all to come up. You know, and that's why when people ask me, like, oh, I saw you on TV. Like, oh, can I can I call? Can I email your agency? Absolutely, because they're going to email them one way or the next. They can just go on IMDb Pro and figure that shit out anyway. Right. Well, why not just like r- lend a hand and also acknowledge that it's like, I'm no different than you. You could be doing the same thing I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not right. the way I'm doing it or, or obviously because we're different people and you do it in your own way. But like, that's a thing. That's a real thing. And people, I think that's a, something I don't say enough um, mm. to people that like, let's just all work on it. Because growing up, that's how I got my first agency. You know, that's how I got first manager, you know, Linda Cardellini. I mean, it was like, yo, let me, you know, it was like. I got you, dog. And then, you know, Mark Valera, another super talented actor, did the same thing. So, um, and most recently, too. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited for the next three to five years. There we go. Yeah. I think it's something yeah. that a lot of people don't talk about as well as, and you kind of mentioned it yourself of like, we have been locked up for three years. So now coming out of it is like, a lot of us haven't even dealt with the mental psychosis of kind of what that was. And so it is still kind of a burgeoning, you know, to the future. And so, yeah, talking about the next three to five years is kind of like post COVID. Yeah. What can we really achieve? And like you said earlier as well, it's like, what is my purpose? Right. So then I can take action on that. And that's like, so, so, so crucial, you know, cause yeah. Yeah, our brains are kind of had to be rewired post, you know, this crazy pandemic that we all went through. So, um, yeah. this, this question is kind of a fun one, but also introspective in that, uh, what would you say as almost kind of a, bo- a letter in a bottle to yourself, your future self in 15 years from now, whether that's something that's congratulatory or, you know, a statement or whatever you want it to be. To my future self? Yes. 15 years from now. So be what? 35? You know what? That's how it starts. <laughs> zing, zing, zing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? This guy's over here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I all oh, root ninja in this movie. Um, okay, so. Um, uh, oh, God. That was good. That was a good one. I'll give myself that. Um, what well, my future... <laughs> As a big, big uh, Chicago Bear fan, and it's a very proud Chicagoan, mm-hmm. an Illinois boy, I will say, um, I'd say bear down, bear down, keep, keep, stay in rhythm, find a rhythm, the healthiest rhythm with the most balance, find it, just find it, take your time, be gentle, be focused, be clear, be compassionate, be wise. Find your rhythm and then stay in it. It's like a speed back. Hmm. 
It's, it's speed bag isn't about speed. It's about listening. It's literally about the sound. That is the cheat code to a speed bag. Hmm. Become a really good listener. And that means listening to myself, listening to my heart, listening to really who I am, what I'm doing, why am I doing what it is that I'm doing, when I'm doing it, with whom I'm doing it. With whom? Yeah. Really, 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 really be self-care is the name of the game. I don't mean self-care like, oh, my God, I'm just going to stay in hashtag self-care. Not that. That's not what I'm talking about. Sometimes self-care is getting my ass kicked. I, I, I keep bringing her up, but, you know, uh, Jenna Krumholtz, she's an amazing dance instructor. And she's, it was the hardest class I had been in, in so long. It's the first class I've been in since COVID. But, mm. And like, I was, I had, she's such a challenge. She's like, level up, level up. That's another thing I would tell my future self. Level up, baby. You got this. You mm-hmm. can do this. You can do it. Where, where, what is the, where is the will? And will is a mental decision. To have the will to do something. It's not about how I feel about it in the morning. I said I would do it. My boy Taylor told me we were playing tennis. And I was getting my butt kicked. And he was just like, look, we, it was raining. Playing tennis in the rain, hmm. not 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 the best sport to do that. Basketball, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And he was like, no, we said we were going to do it. And we did it. And this is what, and we're here. And I hmm. think being consistent, I would tell myself to slow down just a bit. And slow down doesn't mean like... It doesn't, maybe it sounds like a contradiction to everything I've just said, but, but slowing down can help you get specific. You know, you talk about, I, I love football, right? And so talk about Tom Brady, the best quarterback to ever do it, right? And he slowed down the, and then the game slowed down. Hmm. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Stop. Slow down. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be just fine. But then find your rhythm and stick to it. Stick to itiveness. It, it's a tool I have in my toolbox. Grit. It's, it's it's a tool I have in my toolbox. Intrinsically now, it's part of who I am. Yeah. And I would tell that that man, that man, I would say, and then and then also celebrate the victories. Really celebrate them. Not like, great, good job. Not that I sound like that or talk like that, but I I uh shut up. And um and and uh just really celebrate them in the way that they're meant to be celebrated. And that, that sometimes means getting right back to work. That yeah. doesn't sometimes mean champagne and champagne and, you know, caviar or whatever people do. Um, yeah. Wow. What a great question. I'm going to think about that for a long time. Actually, what would I tell myself 15 years from now? Hmm. <sighs> That's a great answer though. Thank you for sharing. Cause Yeah. You you kind of encompass it all into yeah a future a future version of yourself. Then you can look back on this and say, "Wow, look what I've accomplished!" and and I did listen to myself. Yeah. Um, so thank, yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your favorite. Um, is there <laughs> is there one motto or phrase that you personally live by uh, that you kind of always come back to? Whether, you know, whatever situation you may be going through, you kind of come back to this one motto or phrase. The the answer I thought of yesterday, just when people were talking about something like this, and I said, stay sharp. Hmm. Um, But I think more than that, it's, is, um, what do I come back to? This is a really good question. What do I come back to? Um, You got it. You got it. Just slow down. You got it. Don't quit. You got it. You got it. There may be a lull right now, or there may be a peak right now. And I'm very wary of, of getting too high. Hmm. And it's another thing that takes people out, especially in Hollywood. They get one commercial. I, I got it. I did it. And now they're selling insurance. Well, hmm. selling insurance is a great job. My father's yeah. insurance. My father's own insurance was State Farm for years and years. It's, not, it's, it's an honorable job. Bear down. Dig in. Stay focused. Stay focused. That's probably it. Stay focused. I know that th- I can get distracted. Go back to center. Get back to the middle. Get back to the middle. Hmm. Get back to the middle. Yeah. Get back to the middle. And um, yeah, that's it. That's got to be it. Back to the Drop middle. Drop the mic. Amazing. Well, that does wrap it up. Finally, I know that you've given us a ton of your time. So thank you so much. Um, oh, man. You know, I'm- if people want to follow uh, follow you and also, you know, make fun of you, roast you, you know, go on a date with you, uh, where can they find you on social media, David Haley? 
<laughs> See, he does it. Do you see how he does? Uh, I'm at David Haley Loves Me on Instagram. That's how you find me. At David Haley Loves Me on Instagram. Amazing. Do you have a, a website or uh, another platform? Or actually, is there a place where people yes. can see uh, your, your work directly? Yes. Uh, David Slevin, S-L-E-V-I-N, David Slevin, Haley.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, David Slevin, Haley.com and uh, at David Haley loves me, H-A-L-E-Y. Uh, yeah. Wow. What a day. What a, yes. what a day. <laughs> So awesome. Thank you so much, seriously, for all of your time and yeah, your incredible stories, the laughs, all of it. Incredible. And this will be on your this will be on your this will be on your IG or on the website. It'll be everywhere. It's gonna come out and it'll be on YouTube and it's gonna be on Instagram and it's gonna be on every other platform you could possibly think of. And on on audio only as well. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be plastered all over the place. It's like you're famous. So you know, just <laughs> bask bask in the lotus flower of the Creative Lotus podcast. Okay. And on that note, we say goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and listening to this week's episode of the Creative Lotus Podcast. And a huge thank you to David Haley for all of his stories and his insight into his life. This week's Buddhist quote of the week is, We are not merely passive pawns of historical forces nor victims of the past. We can shape and direct history, renewing faith in the capacity of people individually and collectively to create the future is the most pressing task facing us today by Daisaku Ikeda. Thank you once again for watching and listening. Go ahead and give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Go ahead and hit that big old thumb thumbs up button here. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and check out this video up here in the corner if you want to watch another full episode of the Creative Lotus Podcast. And until then, I will say see you later, stay safe, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. What is up, Creative Lotus family? Thank you so much for supporting the Creative Lotus Podcast. Go ahead and follow us on social media. On Facebook, we're at the Creative Lotus Podcast. Here on YouTube, maybe you're watching, we're at the Creative Lotus Podcast as well. And on Instagram, we're at the Creative Lotus Pod. And my personal handle is at Alan Zaki. We say thank you once again. Go ahead and subscribe, listen, write a review. And until the next episode, we'll see you there. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Bye-bye.